Hey, what's going on? This is Preston Pollard, and I'm super, super excited to be interviewing Bradley Constant from the hit show Young Rock. But before I do that, let's take a look at this trailer. Everyone has fallen in love with Young Rock. I'm Hans, I'm Franz, and we want to pop you up. Well, almost everyone. Young Rock, Tuesday on NBC. What's happening? What's up, man? Bradley, this is, I'm super excited. I'm super pumped that you're just taking your time out of your busy schedule to do that. I've been watching Young Rock. Yo, you are killing it. But before I get into all that, I noticed that you and your mom were just in Seattle. How was that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, one of our, our co-stars, Nate Jackson, um, who plays Junkyard Dog on the show, he has his own comedy club in Seattle. They just opened back up after pandemic because we were we were filming literally in Australia and we we're like, oh, we really hope we can get the club back open. So now he got it open. He was like, come on out. So I brought my mom up and we saw a show. We saw D.L. Hughley. Oh, it was so funny. Super man. funny. Was, yeah, super funny. So we were just there for the weekend and it was a good time. That's great. Did you go to the, that Starbucks, the first Starbucks or anything like that? Oh, we walked past. It, okay. That, that line was too long. <laughs> okay. I, I can't do lines. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, man, a lot of people have been watching the show. The show is super inspiring, but. What a lot of people don't know, you've been on this journey, this acting journey, for 10 years. So I want you to take me back to when you were a 12-year-old kid in Alabama, just dreaming of wanting to be an actor. Who was he at that time? <laughs> it was me in a classroom just like this. <laughs> so that was me in about seventh grade when I was 12 years old. Um, I would originally play baseball. I was super into baseball. I wanted to go to pros, do all that but I had surgery on my shoulder, on my left shoulder, and I had a tumor, so I had to get it removed, and it was, like, it was benign, so it wasn't too serious, but um, it knocked me out of baseball for a little bit, and I love baseball, so I didn't really like know what to do, and even at that age, that's, we kind of find our identity, and that's what we really like, you know? So then I was really sad for a bit, I didn't really know what to get into, but I had done a little bit of musical theater when I was in elementary school, and I just one day, I don't know, I was watching Disney Channel. I was like, these kids look like they're having fun. You know, this would be cool to do. And uh, pulled out my mom's laptop and Googled acting classes nearby and um, convinced her to start taking me to classes. This was in Alabama. So we went up, we used to drive up to classes like an hour north of where we lived in Tuscaloosa um, every Saturday. I sucked, <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah, so. Because what, you know, there was another interview you did and you shared at that time. You were shy? Were you? Oh. Were, were, yeah, were, were you yeah, shy at that time? I was shy, bro. I was really shy. So take yeah. me on that journey, the, the, you know, the journey of being shy, but then becoming who you are now. How did you get from there to, you know, because to be an actor, you, you can't really be shy, right? No, you can. You can <laughs> so yeah, what yeah. was that journey like, going from shyness to becoming who you are now? It's funny because acting, I feel like, is what brought me out of that shyness. Because when I did it, especially when you're really nervous, but, you know, you got your lines and you can just step up and do it, everybody else is blurred out, you kind of become more of yourself or you become a different person. You know what I mean? And you don't overthink. I think that's partly why I was shy. I was in like middle school, high school, like worried about what people thought about who I was. But when you're acting, it's like, it's whatever. You, that's your excuse to be whatever you want, you know? So I think that's why I really fell in love with it and leaned into it. And over time, it kind of brought me out of my shell because you have to perform in front of people. Um, but yeah, I was shy in high school though. Well, I'm sure there's people watching right now in school, out of school that are saying, hey, I'm shy. What can I do to break out of this? Like, what would you tell them? <laughs> ah, it just, you gotta suffer through it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but not really. You just, you just gotta keep pushing yourself. I think getting out of your comfort zone is very scary at first. It's like jumping in a pool when it's really cold at first, but then you get used to it and then you're just swimming around. Like, you're cool, right? Exactly. So that shock initially is tough, but once you, you know, you break out of your comfort zone, do things that are, um, you know, not what you usually do, that you might otherwise feel like it might be embarrassing to do, you know, um, and eventually you just kind of get over it. 100% stepping yeah. out of your comfort zone, that is powerful, that's mm -hmm. a powerful key. Yeah. Now I know you and your mom are super close, like that's, mm -hmm. you know, y'all always together. She's my rock. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. How has she inspired your worth ethic? Oh, 100%. I mean, she always, as been one of the biggest, hardest workers in the family. Um, always motivated me and my brothers. And anytime, you know, we didn't grow up with a lot of money. And she always, she worked multiple jobs. She always made sure that we were happy no matter what. So just seeing her, especially even in the hard times, always being that positive figure. We come home, like from school, even if, you know, we weren't sure, you know, if 
like there were times where we the water got cut off and we used to have to boil our water we we went to the back of his gas station we would bring our jugs and we would fill up uh, a water i'd never told nobody this before but we'd fill up the water jug and we'd bring it home and we'd pour it in a pot over the um, over the oven and we'd heat it up and then we'd pour it in the tub and that's what we had the warm water for. Mm-hmm. I'd go first and then my brothers would go after me, which they always jank me because they're like, oh, you left us with that dirty <laughs> bath water to go after us. But like even in situations like that, she made it so fun for us. Like even, it just felt like it was normal and it was fine, you know? And she always worked hard to make sure that we were able to have whatever opportunity we wanted to. I could still play baseball, you know, we still had our books when we went to school. Um, so even as things have gotten better for us, that mentality has stuck with us and that we know that you just gotta keep working hard and when things get hard, um, it's okay to feel down, but you just know that you keep pushing and it's gonna get better, you know? Most definitely. Did you ever feel pressure wanting to help your mom when you were a kid? Um, you know, for me, I think cause I was the youngest, I know my brothers 100%, they felt like they just needed to step up and help out a lot more, but um, for me, it just felt like that was normal. I didn't really know anything else. Like, you know what I mean? I just thought, okay, well, yeah, we boil the water, we do that, you know, <laughs> eat the cheaper food, whichever. Um, so I didn't really feel like I had to help her yet. But as I got older and now looking back on it, I'm like, yeah, as soon as I can, I'm gonna buy her a crib. She's never gonna have to pay for anything else, you know. Um, was it hard to balance that and being a kid, like in school, going through, like you said, the challenging times at home and then you would go to school? Was there any? Yeah, and that's, Honestly, and that's the crazy thing about you know playing DJ on Young Rock is that um, I never realized we had kind of those similarities. Now it's, it's different, and that's the point of relating. Never, you're never gonna have the exact same backstory, but you can still relate in some way. Um, yeah, I was real stressed at home. Then my parents got divorced um, when I was going into middle school, and yeah, I was just dealing with a lot because I mean, part of it I was really depressed, and then I think at the time I didn't really know what depression was. You know, um, that was right after I had lost baseball too. Um, and, you know, I think going to school, I just want to have fun. So for a while, I wasn't shy at, you know, before um, high school came around and I would go to school, I'd be kind of probably really annoying. I was always like the jokester mm-hmm. of class. Um, but then it caught up to me and then I became quiet because it just came too much. Like, and I didn't want to chat with people because, you know, you who wants to go to school and tell them, oh yeah, I'm dealing with this at home or, you know, part of it is, I guess it's like a guy thing too. You feel too tough to like talk with anybody about anything. Um, but at least, you know, I have my mom and my family and my brother's are always there for me and we've kept each other strong. And yeah. yeah, but you never want to carry that at school. And sometimes you take it out, you know, I might lash out on some, even my closest friends, we might be playing football and I might be very aggressive, you know, more, than, more so than I should be, you know. Um, but that's just, you know, letting out. Even on the show, you see like DJ knocking out the kids, you know, like, <laughs> granted, granted, you know, he thought he was doing what was right, but at the same time, I think part of that is just balancing that stress of being at school. You wanna impress the girls, you wanna be popular, you know, but nobody really understands what you're really dealing with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mentioned depression. There's a, a lot of us going through things right now. How did you deal with that, cope with that depression? What made you uh, say feel better or just helped you in general? Um, you know, initially I thought it was just more particular things. Like I needed to get that new game that came out on Xbox. You know, when I was little, when I was 12, 13, um, and I did go through therapy for a little bit, but I hated it, you know, cause I never felt like they were listening to me. Now that I think therapy can be good for you, you know? Um, but eventually what got me through it, like I said, is just leaning on my family. My mom shows me so much love my older brothers too and like all the times I can remember they I could confide in them and we just go sit out in the back porch and chat you know about that um, and I still have dealt with it even more recently you know even last year after I booked this you know I dealt with it a good bit because I was working in the grocery store and we actually I didn't know whether the show was still gonna go on or not after I had booked it because I booked it in March and then everything shut down you know and it's just minor and that's I think that's one of the biggest things is learning that that's just part of life and things will be down at times and you just got to keep pushing through it and it gets back good, you know? Uh, and you, there's so much you're mentioning. I, I mean, I can go back to the grocery store, but we're going to get to that. I got, I got all day. <laughs> I got all day. Gonna, um, <laughs> but in Young Rock, The Rock talks about working the gimmick yeah. in school, appearing fly than he was or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So did you ever feel needed to keep up with any type of image when you were in school? Um, you know, not really, uh, not too much. 
when I went into high school, uh, both my older brothers went to the same high school, and uh, my actually my middle brother Michael was the first one to leave Tuscaloosa. Like, leave it's a kind of small town; nobody leaves there. But he went to Harvard. And so I came into high school and I was like, oh, you Michael Costa's brother. <laughs> so I was like, oh, and the teachers were like, okay, good. You know, I was like, oh, have you seen my grades from eighth grade? Nah. <laughs> but, um, you know, part of that was, yeah, and the image that I had beforehand, I never talked about what I was dealing with at home. And um, you know, I didn't even talk too much about wanting to, you know, pursue acting and leave and do all that. And then eventually I was just like, deuces. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to New York. <laughs> Uh, to pursue all this, but City, what was that? What was that like from moving to New York and then LA? Mm. Um, gosh, I, I think when I moved to New York, it was a lot more exciting than when I moved to LA because I was from Alabama. Yeah. And of course, that was before we had even thought like that we could move anywhere. Um, and somehow, and of course, I was young enough, I didn't really think too deeply about the logistics of all of it. But my mom is a trooper, and we got a rental car, packed whatever we could in the back of it. Uh, moved up to New York um, and stayed maybe about an hour north of the city, but we stayed in this attic of this couple's house. Hold on, hold on. You know you're talking about some cobweb type of attic? The horror movie type of attic? <laughs> no, what you talking about? No, we, we cleaned okay. it up. It was okay. kind of nice. And there was even a, our, we had our own bathroom up there. So, well, we didn't have our own like shower and stuff, so we had to go down to the area and do that. But we had, I slept like three feet away from my mom. Yeah. <laughs> How did you keep positive during that time? Like, I, mean, I never expected anything different, you know, I didn't expect to like move there and be in like some fancy place. Now that's the goal you want to one day, you know, but I mean, like I said, we didn't come from too much. So I didn't really have high expectations. I was just happy to be in New York, like pursuing this dream, like, you know, especially like I said, come from that small town mentality, like to be living there, period. And nobody in New York, most people aren't living in like a big, spacious, it's expensive to live there. So yeah, we lived in that um, the attic of this couple's house. And uh, that was about six months we did that. And then we eventually moved into the city, um, found a cheap sublet, and I still slept about five feet away from her. But yeah, that's that's my mom, whatever, oh, my friends. Man. Hustle, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. Now when you're, New York again, big city, LA, big city. Yeah. Did you just have a little bitty type of fear but all these people in Alabama is kind of a smaller place, and then you're just yeah. in this melting pot with, you better go get it. I was fearless. And I think, it, cause it excited me too much. You know, I think it was just too fun. Like none of it was, you know, frightening at all. And I think once I started going to classes and I met people, New York is such an awesome place. Cause on the surface, it seems tough. Mm -hmm. You know, you go visit New York, like damn, these people move fast. They don't have time of day for you. But once you live there for a little bit, you get to know people, you know your communities, and you know where you're going. Um, it's one of the most beautiful cities ever. A lot of beautiful, strong-minded people there because they work hard and everything moves really fast there and everybody's on a mission. Everybody's got a family to take care of and everybody has goals and ambitions. And I think that rubbed off on me a lot there and I got really focused, took tons of classes, started doing some commercials and um, like student films and things like that. Did some extra work, which was fun. Awesome. Yeah. You mentioned fearless, but you said it like it was nothing, like I was fearless. But there's a lot of people that say, man, look, man, I'm trying to be fearless, but how? How yeah. do you be fit? What do you do? Um, I think that only came because I loved what I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't really have, you know, I went to an audition, I was nervous, you know, but as far as being there in the pursuit of doing all that, leaving my hometown, uh, it was sad to leave some family, but you know, we can always come visit each other. I think, um, yeah, as long as you just love what you're doing, even if it can be scary at times, you know, you'll be fine if you're mm -hmm. fearless. I love that, be fearless. Yeah, and that was the same way coming into this. Like I said, Young Rock was my first show ever. <laughs> so I had never been on a set like that before. And here I was playing Dwayne Johnson. And I was Come like, on. I was like, ah, so I was a little bit nervous with that one, you yeah. know. But I got there and I just, you just gotta tell yourself, you're just like, forget it. I'm here, you're either gonna do it or you're not gonna do it, and you push forward. Right. Um, and it ended up being a learning experience. And that's another thing too, is not, um, not thinking too highly of yourself. You gotta embrace like have some humility, embrace that it might be hard, you might mess up, but you're gonna pick up and you're gonna go from there. You know, so if you're not afraid to mess up, then what well, do you got to be scared of, mm -hmm. you know? And that, that's why, I, before we were talking on the camera, I said that's keeping you at a great place, that humility that you have. And I know, again, your parents have did a great job yeah. of doing that, so I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm super excited for you. Um, in Young Rock, the Rock said a single handshake changed the course of his life. Yeah. Um, do you remember a moment where um, there was just a moment 
where it, it led to something like, it made, it made a big impact on your life? Was there a moment where something just made a big impact on your life? Hmm. I don't know, I mean, I think that, that surgery, when it knocked me out of baseball, obviously was the key, you know, big change because I was super happy, I was chilling, I was playing baseball, and then like I said, I lost my identity, that's something I love doing. Um, and I tried out for the team like three years in a row, so I found the moment. Wow, you just made me find the moment. Mm -hmm. um, my third time trying out for the baseball team, um, this is when I was like 13, uh, 14, and I missed, we were at the batting area of it, he sent maybe like 60 pitches, I missed every single pitch, which is uncharacteristic. Like I felt, I had played tons of baseball since I was little, and there's no way, I had even been practicing with my buddy who was already on the team, he was trying to help me get back into it, and I did okay, but at the practice I just, I didn't hit a single one, and I started crying. And then all the players came over, these are my friends too in school, and that was embarrassing as ever, man. Um, and I don't know, I just, it, it, it felt weird to seem like I sucked at something that I loved and I'd put a lot of time in. And that just had a huge switch in like how life was for me the next couple of years, trying to find, like I said, that depression that kind of came afterwards, but trying to find a way to resolve it, like to lift myself up, find something new that could be it could be fun. So I think that moment, I always think, I remember it like it was yesterday, just of missing that last pitch. And he was like, no, this guy, you just focus. And he gave me like 20 more pitches. And I just can't even like, I think I grazed one pitch, but I didn't hit a single one. And just crying there for a minute and just looking around and everybody just staring at me like, yo, you good? And I'm like, no, I wasn't. Um, that's, that's still in my head forever. Mm -hmm. But it's really cool being here now and just seeing how you know, I went home and I found something else, like acting, and I kept pushing for it. And yeah, you know. And in the meantime of that, you were literally working at a grocery store, Sprouts, <laughs> correct? Oh yeah. So that yeah, since I moved to Los yeah, since Angeles, you moved, right? Yeah, when I moved to Los Angeles, I uh, started working at a grocery store. <laughs> and that was just last year. Yeah, just last year too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're working at a grocery store. What was your job? Like, what? Are like, you the cashier? What, so I worked in a partnership with Instacart. I'm sure you probably yeah. heard of it as a delivery <laughs> service but I didn't do delivery part. So I worked in the store with the regular workers, but I would shop people's orders and I would bag them up, put them on a shelf and then go do my thing. Sometimes I helped out with other things like uh, restocking and all that. But um, otherwise, yeah, that was my job. <laughs> so now, now this is what I got to hear. So when you got the part, what was your exit like? Were you just taking off your apron like, forget this thing. <laughs> no, no, no. What no, was your no, exit that, like? That, it wasn't like that, because I love the people I work with, man. And I think especially the talk. Let that go, talk. <laughs> These water, exactly. Yeah. But um, I think, you know, times were hard and for everybody, especially once COVID hit. And it, obviously, you know, the grocery store is not the funnest job to work at. We didn't really like it that much anyways. But um, just as COVID hit and you know, seeing these people that I've worked with for a couple of years already deal with the fact that now their kids are at home, they're not at school, they don't know what to do with their kids. Um, money is hard, we're not making that much money doing the job, uh, but at least we were able to work, you know, that was a great thing. So we had something to come to uh, during a time where there's nowhere else to be. Um, but we were always there for each other, we kept each other's spirits up. Um, so I really, it, actually, I really enjoyed maybe not the work itself, but just being able to go there and work with those people mm -hmm. throughout last year. Because I booked Young Rock in March of last year, um, then COVID hit immediately after my last audition. Um, and we didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything about the show until June. So I, I had thought, dang, it probably got canceled or something. And um, just going to work every day with that on my head, I was like, oh, this is right. getting right. rough. And then of course we had um, George Floyd getting murdered and the crazy protests that happened afterwards. And it was just a really tough time around June. Um, but did, what did you do in that time when you were feeling, you know, that's probably stress, anxiety. How was that time? All of that, all of that. How did man. you deal with um, that when you're? Well, I still, I live here with my mom. So we always, you know, confided in each other and we'd have long discussions about what's going on, you know. Um, and she always has a wonderful perspective because she's, of course, a white mom, but she has mixed kids, you know, I'm African-American as well. And just to be able to chat through everything that was going on at that time. Then my coworkers too, we have, all ethnicities and just being able to go to work, have somewhere to be and talk with people about what's going on. We kept each other's spirits high and like, we got this, it's cool. Cause there was a time where it was already tough working at that store and um, 
of course, not alone dealing with people that were really upset about the fact that there was no food and we couldn't get their orders completed because I would just send them a picture of the stock. Like, the shelves are empty. There's nothing for you. But um, just, you know, going through work and going through that whole process together just lifted us, mm-hmm. lifted us up. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. And it seems like your whole story, you're, you're, you have been able to go within and to actually just trust your instincts. How can someone learn to trust their own instincts and just go? It's a lot of trial and error. I'm still working through it. I'm I, every day. I'm still growing, and I get insecure about some things. But um, at the end of the day, like that comes back around. Where you just say, I got to trust myself, and you got to go forward. And I think also because I did start this ten years ago in pursuit of this, and even though it doesn't feel that long to me, I was gonna say ten years. Damn, that's a long. It's about to be eleven years now. <laughs> but um, you know, I think. All the rejection that it was had, there was been lots of ups and downs. Um, we still struggled. I was month to month on rent until I left to go, show to go shoot this show, you know. So, um, just always, you know, being grounded and like we said, the humility thing comes, and comes back around to it, um, keeps you going. Yeah. Hey, how do you deal with that rejection? Uh, acting as rejection, life in general, we get rejected. How do you deal with that, but not let that affect you internally? Um, it's tough because like, it did. It did. It, <laughs> right, it hurt right. me internally a lot. Okay. Um, but I, I got to a point where um, I got out here. I signed with an agency. I signed with a modeling agency as well. I was like, "Wow, this is so cool! It's all happening." And then uh, not too long after that, they both dropped me. And then I didn't get auditions for like like this six months. It felt like I was barely getting anything, and I almost felt like I was starting over because even at that point, I've been pursuing it for six years, you know, um, and. I sat back and I was like, okay, why am I doing this? Am I doing this because I'm chasing that success? Like, because I just really want to book something or do this? Or because I love it? Um, And I just heated up with the classes again um, and then found out again why I loved it so much. That same feeling I had when I took my first class in Birmingham. Like, regardless of what else is going on in your life, when you're performing or whatever field you're doing, if you're a doctor, you're operating, I'm sure that moment for you when you're doing what you love brings that happiness back to you. You're like, oh, that's why, exactly. And it's not about um, someone else's opinion of you. And with auditioning, of course, it's not always you. You can do a great job. And that's the tough thing. They don't really tell you, uh, like, you know, in sports, you got statistics. If I don't run this fast, I don't do this, then I'm not going to make it to the league, you know. But with acting, you walk out of that room and it's all in your head. Um, But I just started to gain a lot more control of my thoughts and how I viewed myself. Um, and didn't let that rejection Mm -hmm. or someone else, you know, not riding with me or anything like that deter me from my path and where Mm -hmm. I was going. Um, And I just started living with love, man. Like I said, the people that I worked with and me and my mom got a, we put in together for a Disney annual pass and we got the cheapest one they had and we would go there like uh, every few weekends we would go and that's just, you know, keeping that positive energy and keeping ourselves uh, motivated and you know, eventually just being good to people, good to casting. When you walk in that room, it's not about you. It's just doing something you love and being good to people. Right. Um, and it seems to have paid off. Well, yeah. def- but yeah. see, I didn't know that about you, that you were actually got dropped. Are you back with them now, the same people that dropped you? Uh, no, so I've, or- and I still had a manager okay. at the time. So I had a manager in an agency. The agencies uh, dropped me. I'm still, um, wow. but you know, and that's, that's just part of the business, that's honestly. Funny. I'm still, I've, I had contact with them. But I'm sure they see them. you now, though. Yeah, and, but I've but had, it ain't no revenge. It ain't right, nothing. Exactly. But it's just and I've had contact with them still um, over the time too, and um, we talked about this show as well. And it's just mutual respect for it all. And of course, I was hurt that I was dropped. And but at the time, you know, you after stop. after I let it go, I responded, and I, it was all love. You know, they believed in me, and it just didn't work out. And now we're all working out now, anyway. So. Right. Um, well, now you're doing your thing. People all around the world, they're watching you. They're enjoying the show. But I want to know what has shifted within you now that you're here at this place from where you were 10 years ago. What new has shifted confidence? What any, is there anything that's shifted new? You know what? Um, of course, it definitely more confidence. Um, that just comes naturally with, you know, success. But um, gosh, I'm even more. I feel like it's even less about me than it was even at that time. You know, because I was still focused on trying to reach that goal. Um, but it kind of feels like I'm starting over. Again, I'm at a new point. Um, I finally booked a job. I'm on a TV show. So there's more opportunities that could come from this. Um, But um, I feel like I have more power than I did before. But not not for my own use. Like, I loved 
talking with those kids at the school, you know, because it's so weird to be in a position where I feel like I can tell people about my story, you know, and they actually, it can help them in some way, you know, with what I dealt with and just being persistent and it paid off. Um, so, I don't know, I, just, I feel like I opened up a new book and who knows what could happen now. Um, but I definitely want to do a lot of giving back because I just see myself in so many kids sometimes, even not kids, I still feel like a kid, but you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like people younger than me or people even my age who are just a little further behind in their career. Um, and I just want to make sure, because I wish a lot of times that, of course I have my family, but I never had that mentor within the industry that said, here's what you need to do. Right. You know, you got this. I was always like just fight, figuring it out on my own. Um, so I definitely want to be there for somebody that you know, has been in that situation. And you're doing it now, so I want to just let you know that even right now, at this moment, yes, you're young, but you're doing those things now. And as you stay consistent with those things, you know, uh, it just, your life, everything is gonna be just more amazing. And I know, you already know this, helping people, giving back. But in my life, I recognize that, just doing the small things, you know, like we just talked to the, um, the, the gardener outside. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just the small things that really bring us together. And so, exactly. again, I'm proud of you for just, um, your, and your family for just how, how they raised you, man. I'm just, um, I'm, it's, it's just it's so, so dope. And um, in Young Rock, you and The Rock have so many similarities. Um, what new revelations or uh, uh, aha moments have came up during that time of just being on set? <laughs> man, it's weird. It's really weird because part of it, it, it's all acting, of course, but it really just felt like I was playing myself in a lot of situations, you know? <laughs> Granted, like, I, I never, you know, I never really stole or anything, not that I'm a saint, I ain't a good right. kid, but you know what I mean, like, so. right, exactly. But um, seeing that his come up and his struggles, like his family struggles, his family financial struggles, and seeing how, you know, he's become who he is now. And this, we were talking about this with the gardener as well when we were just coming in here, like the energy that you're putting out always comes back, you know, to you. So I think it's just so crazy that you know, I'm getting to play somebody like Dwayne right now is just a perfect ex example of what we want to be, you know, as we progress and how we, you know, we make up for our mistakes and we proceed. We grow from everything and nobody's perfect, you know. Um, so, yeah, man, just I never thought that I would be able to relate with somebody like him. You know, I've been a fan of his, of course, since I was little. Everybody's been known who he is, you know what I mean? So just getting to play him and see that wow, we have some shared growth and life experience, um, which I think a lot of people watching the show will be able to. Um, it's just wow. And now he's your mentor as well. Yeah, and it's just, it's weird. <laughs> right? It's weird, man. Yeah, it's really uh, weird. So, uh, it's a wrap, man, but I'm just so, like I said, again, uh, uh, blessed to be able to, to meet you. Um, nice. Bradley, great this has been too. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> of course, of course. All right, y'all, I'm here with Bradley Constant, and we about to do a little something, something a little bit different. We about to play a game. Are you ready? I'm ready. I hope you're ready. <laughs> All right, now, as some people might know, I am a motivational speaker, uh, but you know, I'm doing this interview, but I love working with kids. So now, I'm putting you to the test to be a motivational speaker. So you can have 30 seconds. I'm gonna give you three topics, but these okay. topics are something you relate to. So I ain't giving you nothing trickery. Okay, okay. These topics are something that it, it aligns with who you are. So I'm gonna name a topic, and then you're gonna just give it your all. You got 30, it, it could be 20 seconds, whatever, it ain't, you know. But I'm gonna name a topic, you're gonna look at the camera, and you're gonna give your take on a motivational script to inspire somebody right there. So the first topic <laughs> is self-love. Self-love, oh. Uh, all right, anytime, and go ahead. Anytime, 30 seconds. All right, put on my Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, self-love is actually not just loving yourself. It's loving the people around you and putting out love and you will receive it. Um, I, I initially thought that doing things for myself would uh, make me happier and maybe getting material things, but that's not the case. The things that I remember most in my life that make me happy to think about are what I've done for other people and seeing them happy. Wow. Ooh, give me some of that. <laughs> I tried. You're a motivational speaker right here, y'all. Okay, all right, the next one. Um, making positive choices. Positive choices. Positive choices. Yeah. Um, making positive choices is not always making the right choice. Um, you're going to make mistakes, but a positive choice is a choice that's made from your heart, something that you felt was right initially. So even if it turns out to be the wrong decision, it was still a positive choice. And as you collect more positive uh, choices over your life, um, it pays off and you're still headed on the right path. 
Ooh. Give me some. Okay. Now we got one more. This one's gonna be a little bit tricky. Oh god. But you're gonna be inspired though. It's gonna okay. it's gonna it's gonna wrap you up a little bit. Yeah. Star Wars. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, you got me, you got me. All right. <clears throat> Motivation about Star Wars? Motivation about Star Wars. <sighs> Alright. Well, Star Wars is one of the greatest movies of all time. All of them. Uh, my favorite is A New Hope. But Literally, it's within the title of the movie. It's a new hope. It's a story of struggles and family. It's a lot more sci-fi. <laughs> but you can relate with a lot of things in it. And I think for me, living in a fantasy land, um, growing up being a huge fan of Star Wars, was able to take me out of uh, the environment I was in. And for a lot of people, I think they need a chance to step away um, into another universe that they can actually relate with, even though it seems so you know, fantastical. So. Wow. Star Wars. <laughs> it's awesome. right, I don't got, know how motivational no, that no, was. No, no, that was motivational. And we got one more thing. This is something I never did before either, but I said, you know what? You gifted us with your time. So we want to gift you with something. Stay right there. Oh, what? What's this? <laughs> <laughs> you got the bow on it and everything. Now, I, now I can't rap now, but okay. it's not about my rapping. You can't rap or you can't rap? No, no. <laughs> Both of them. I want you to open uh, it. And, uh, first of all, push yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, it's from us. Okay. I want you to open it. Okay, okay. Oh, man. You don't have to do it. A little, little birthday gift. Early. Early birthday gift. Yeah, I'm about to enter my Jordan year. Oh, no. You were playing. <laughs> You're playing, bro. Okay, come on. Man. I'm gonna finish this today. <laughs> I'm gonna go home right now and finish this. I'm not playing with Are you. Are you serious? Man. Thank you. Yo, Thank you, no bro. problem. Thank you. Thank you. You gifted us with your time. We wanted to gift you with something. We really appreciate this. Without you realizing it, you're helping a lot of people, and that's what we're here on Earth to do, is to inspire yeah. others. So 100%. thank you, Bradley. More great things are, are headed your way. Uh, you're putting out that good energy, and things are just flowing. So thank you for this energy, man. Oh, thank you, Preston. Thank you. No worries. Man. Positive vibes all the Positive way. Positive vibes. <laughs> we out of here. It's a wrap. Take care. Just remember Chapel Ray. <laughs>